And we're going to talk about CBCS for a minute. Big news came out this week. They just launched the census for CBCS. This is something that a lot of fans have been asking for. It's been a couple of years now. People have been waiting for it. And it's finally come out. How do you think this affects CBCS going forward? And how do you think it'll have an effect on the market as well? To be honest, I didn't, until this news came out, I didn't realize they didn't even have a census. So I guess I, in, in my mind, it's kind of a given if it's something that, that a company like that should offer. Um, so yeah, I think it's, a, it's definitely a marketing tool. It's, I look up census information if I'm considering, you know, purchasing a book, investing in a book, or even getting something graded, what, uh, you know, what, what is worth grading for a certain comic book? If it's a 9.4, 9.6, is it worth it? Or should it only be a 9.8? Uh, so it's good to see that CBCS is, I guess, catching up in that arena. Um, I think they're kind of on equal footing in other parts of it, but uh, I, I think it's something that should have been offered. So I'm glad they do. Yeah, I, I definitely think um, any sort of competition between CBCS, uh, CGC, and right now those are really the two, obviously the two big ones, um, PGX, even the, this new EGS service that's come out, any sort of competition in the industry is good for everyone. Um, not only is it going to give us better prices, better products, better services. Um, also too, it's going to help, like Tony said, be, help you to be able to make better financial decisions as far as how much you want to invest in a book. Should you jump, is it really worth that extra money to go from that nine, two to that nine, four? Should I only get in a nine, eight? Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this census release is going to affect the prices of just comics in general, because a lot of people with only having the one CGC census, you know, are going off. Well, X amount of this, X amount of that, and now it's going to be flooded with, well, maybe there's one and a half times double, triple, quadruple in that grade. I mean, I, I can only speculate as far as how, how many are going to be, uh, how much that's going to increase for each book, each grade. Obviously, that's going to be specific to each, uh, each and every one, but something like this is definitely good for us as a community because it's just going to give us uh, more accurate information, better competition between the companies. And I mean, CBCS has really been lately really trying to step up their game as far as what they can offer, what they're doing, turnaround times, all that. Um, their grading uh, has definitely been, has definitely been good. So I think uh, this pressure coming from CBCS is going to only translate to better product and service from CGC and they're going to have to adapt um, they're going to have to push the envelope in some way that's going to make CBCS then have to turn around and do the same thing. And as, as the years go on, this is, this is what we want as a community. We want that competition. You don't ever want it to just be CGC is the gold standard and that's it. And that's all we got. That's bad for us. That's bad. You know what I mean? Cause that for a whole slew of reasons, but um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this does. I think it's only going to help CBCS um, in general, the comic community in general. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see over the next few months kind of how this affects everything. I, th I think Steve Borak from uh, uh, CBCS is the man because I think he handled this perfectly. First off, he caught a lot of flack early on about not having the census, but he really stayed steadfast and true to the reasons why the census wasn't out there. And I think not a lot of people understood that. Uh, people would complain about a lack of a census as if it was, say, an oversight on CBCS's part, when in reality, it was done to protect the values of all of the comics that we love. It, you know, I, I don't want to get too, like, mathematician on you, but we're talking about a matter of sample size. Yeah, so they if have a big enough canvas to create one. Right. If your sample size is too small, if, if they would have started and then immediately had a census upon starting, you know, you talk, Tony talked about making decisions based on censuses, you know, Adam piggybacked on that. And then, you know, these are two guys who buy graded books and what CBCS didn't want to do is give you a negative interpretation of the market by say, maybe not having graded a lot of a book that there is actually a ton out there. They just haven't gotten to grading them or having graded a lot of a book that's really actually kind of rare, but based on the sample size, it may lead you to believe that it's less rare. Two types of people are being affected right now. One less than the other. The one, the area that's less is those who say are heavily invested in graded books that are 
prevalent. Say your New Mutants 98, your um, ASM 129, or your ASM more like 361, 300. You're seeing the glutton of books that CBCS has graded, and you're realizing, wow, this problem was even bigger than I realized. But I honestly don't think that's going to have a huge effect. I mean, deep in our hearts, we all kind of knew that, right? We go to conventions. We see the amount of ASM 300s that are CBCS labeled. I think any of us with some common sense kind of knew that was going to happen. What I think is surprising some people is some of these like uber rare variants where, where you guys mentioned like the census being so important to what CGC does. Some of these collectors who maybe had this like J. Scott Campbell variant that there's only three of in a 9-8 in the CGC census suddenly now realize I just went from three to six because there's three CBCS 9-8s. That majorly affects that market. Could have uh, a substantial effect on, on big high-end um, variants if they are more prevalent than thought of. And what, again, we're talking, this is a matter of sample size. So the smaller the sample size, say six or five, the more an impact on any one given addition to that sample size, you know, that you get. So that's what you're seeing here with that early on from the, the census, but they did a great job. And then if you guys spend some time, I know you guys said you, you spend some time with the CGC census, spend some time with the CBCS set census it is far more comprehensive you can look at graders notes you can look at real specifics on the books incredible i mean if and that's another thing is if you're gonna delay releasing something that the public is clamoring for ooh, when you release it you better you better bring it and they did and they brought it and not only that they dropped it kind of out of nowhere there wasn't like some announcement the census is coming it just came out of nowhere um it it and it was smart to do it that way because we're in a down news cycle and now everybody's talking about CBCS. For the last week, CBCS has been a topic of conversation. And I agree with Adam on the value of competition, but that's what they need. They need to be talked about. They need the attention of the market. They need more people to give them a try, get books graded. They need to grade more key books because that, that, those key books that get graded, they get entombed forever. And that is a walking piece of advertising for your company. So the more that they can do those things, um, the better they're going to be. I think there's some areas they need to work on. Like Brian and I have talked about the, the verification signature is the best thing in all of grading. Uh, it allows you to get a book graded from, say, a deceased creator or a creator that you maybe you didn't have a witness at the time, but, you know, you, you're, you're sitting there like in Step Brothers. You're not going to not get Randy Jackson to sign this sword. So if I'm going to get that signature when I got that opportunity – and I've got this beautiful Donnie Kate signature that's almost worthless on this book. At least now I can get it certified. Um, and I don't feel like they market that enough because that is a competitive advantage for them that they have over the rest. They're affiliated and owned by Beckett Media. Beckett Media is the name in sports cards. It is the, the basically the overstreet, but in a way more important level uh, than overstreet is in comics. Um, they are the kind of the godfathers of, of sports card media. And I think that that lends some credibility to what is going on with CBCS. So shout out to CBCS for doing this. And again, it's kind of like the boom thing where it's like, this stuff is just good for the hobby. So it's good. And I'm glad for all of the, I'm not a huge hardcore grader. Um, I'm not a huge graded collector, but I know this is just really good news for my, my people who are heavily invested in the grading market. Cause now you can kind of see before everyone else figures out, you got this window of opportunity to see like, am I moving in the right direction or uh Oh, do I notice some trends in the CBCS census that tells me I want to switch up my investments? Yeah. Well, and, and then to, to speak of, uh, of Steve as well, I've listened to a few of uh, interviews he's done recently and, and the things he's put, put it out. Um, he's actively commented on multiple of my posts where I've tagged him in and uh, put them in stories and different stuff. He's extremely active. He's extremely dedicated uh, to the craft. He's, all like you said, there's a lot of things that he he does that a lot of people in the community don't know why they're doing unless you sit down and listen to an hour hour and a half interview unless you talk to him person he'll answer your Instagram comments he'll answer your Instagram messages he's there at CBCS six seven days a week his hands go almost on every um, comic that comes through to to finalize things from what I understand I mean he's he's very dedicated to giving the, the highest level of of product consistency. Um, and just turning things over and he's just he has a love for the the um, 
the, the hobby. And, and, and a lot of people don't know too, is like he was one of the people who helped to start CGC and give them such a great, um, uh, great start off and, and give them their reputation as being the number one and grading, being consistent, being fair, setting that standard, help to set up the guidelines for how, how grading is done. Um, and now he's started his own company. And the only reason I really even feel like they're, I guess, behind on things is because CGC has been around longer than CBCS. But as time goes on, as, as CBCS is around for longer and longer, you're going to see them do stuff like this, like, oh, you want a census? Well, here's all the greater notes to everything on that census. They're going to go above and beyond their competition, even if that means delaying things for a little bit, because they're, they're concerned with the long-term goals. They're concerned with you as the hobbyist, as the collector, and they're going to give you, from everything I've seen so far and everything I've seen out of that man, the best product that they can possibly give you that they think is going to be the best for you and the best for the community. So def, I'm, I'm actually getting ready to send a bunch of books to, uh, to them. Um, a while ago on my Instagram, I had talked about, I was getting ready to send a bunch of books to them. I was going to switch over to CBCS and give them a shot. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. So. I think what you said about greater notes though, Jack, no one, nobody should be charging for greater notes. And that's just, it's like, paying $10,000 to go to college and then you ask your professor why you got a C and they ask for money. Like, that's just stupid. So it, I, that should be a given. I, I definitely think, you know, and something you guys, as you guys were talking, I was just thinking like, I didn't realize I guess that the decision to not have a census was a strategic one previously. Um, and I, I know, uh, like you said, his reasoning for that or what they talked about. I wonder if part of it, though, is, is really just the comparison. Now that we have a census, if you look at high volume books, you're going to have an actual metric to measure. You, you can look at spawn number one and somebody can break it down. What is the average grade for spawn books on CGC? What is the average grade for spawn one? on CBCS, um, it's always been talked about, oh, this company grades better than this company, or oh, no, this company grades horribly. Every, you know, it's kind of all over the board. Everybody's got their favorite. Um, but now there's going to be, there's actually a way to measure that. So I wonder if there's going to be some aggregating of, of, those, uh, of those two, you know, data sets of data points. Um, not that that will be accurate. You know, I think statistically speaking, uh, you could you could come up with a good argument, but like you said, sample size is, is huge. But I don't think that's going to stop people from starting to compare now that they're both uh, they're both available. Yeah, well, I'll tell you the the reason why you're paying for greater notes at CGC is because for a long time they were top dog with no competition, so they thought, how can we make a little bit of extra money? I'm gonna right. charge for something that should have been included in that price point to begin with. So I guarantee you, you're going to eat micro transactions like video games. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're just shaving that one tenth of a cent out of there. Um, oh, you wanted bubble wrap. Oh, okay. No, you want a protection. Oh, okay. And, you didn't pay extra. Sorry. Exactly. So what, what I guarantee what you're going to see is you're going to CGC is going to have to adapt. Uh, and, and now that's going to help us. I mean, even with something as silly, uh, something I love that CGC is doing is those custom labels. I think they're cool, uh, the Spider-Man, all that stuff. But I guarantee you if CBCS started to offer those for $4 a piece on their labels, CGC would have to go down to $3, and then they could go to 2 one. And then, you know what, years in the future, custom labels could be just a free option that you they upload offer. Upload your own image as a label. No, exactly. Kidding. There you go. Yeah, you could have a picture of Brian on your, you know, Amazing Fantasy fifteen nine eight that you're going to get graded. So yeah, you you joke. I want to do an exclusive variant and then get a custom label for the graded nine eight option. I want that <laughs> Simpleman's Comics CBCS exclusive label. Rooster River I'm, label. I'm putting that out there. I'm putting yeah. that out there into the universe. Into right the now. universe. Yeah, I want that custom CBCS Simpleman's Comics label. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, especially with how much uh, people can move stuff in the community nowadays with these big, you know, bigger YouTube channels and stuff like that. I mean, shoot, if I could get some sort of crazy boom blank variant and send it to Brian to draw a picture on and then send it into CBCS <laughs> and get a, a, a C, you know, a Simple Vince comic custom label on it. Uh, that'd be great. You know, I'd have them draw a picture of your face on their deck, you know, and we'll just <laughs> be center of my display when I finally get that up. <laughs> I love it. I, I I personally I like the census. I was I'll admit I was one of the impatient ones that was like waiting for it, kept waiting for it to come out. There's no stranger that we've talked about CBCS on this before that I'm a fan of CBCS. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't own CGC. 
comics as well, but I've always liked C CBCS. I'm still not a big fan of the Rivets cover, but that's another story. I think they grade well. I think they have great competition, and I agree. Steve Brock's a great person, and like you said, he's a comic fan first who has a grading company, which is I think bodes well to the comic community, whether people know that or not. I mean, great guy, and he's a big supporter of that Hero Initiative. Hero Initiative is a great thing. Uh, comic Core, friends of our channel, are also part of Hero Initiative stuff. So we love promoting that. And I was up, able to have the opportunity to facilitate a panel last week with Steve Barak and, and some other people for that Hero Initiative, and that was a great opportunity as well. He also, before CGC was founded, he was a grader for stuff at auction at like Sotheby, Sotheby's and Christie's. I mean, he's been around for a good while. So the fact that he's also big in the comic community makes me a big fan. Nicest guy, like you guys said. Um, he was just recently, for another friend that was also on this this podcast, Nico, he just did an interview with him over on that Tales from a Flipside channel if you want to check them out. But even more importantly, they got a new label. They got a new holder coming out. They're going to have a registry, but they're not calling a registry. And if you want to ask questions about any of that, we are also going to have Steve Barak right here on this podcast on the next episode. So stay tuned nice. for that.